everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Octeo Studio and today I'm going to share with you what I made with those 4x4 cards from the Creative Arts Collaboration Mail Art Collaboration Swap thing. <laughs> this is the envelope that I received back. Um, one was one card is missing, there were supposed to be eight, but it got lost in the mail and nobody can find it. So I have seven 4x4 four four cards here, one of which is the one that I made. And then in addition, there was some papers and flowers and interesting things that came in the envelope. Um, lots of times when you do swaps, people add extra things. And so I ended up using most of that as well on this project. And what I'm making is, uh, I guess you'd call it a flip book, kind of a flip book, or an accordion fold book maybe, but I picked out three pieces of 12 by 12 cardstock from my stash from when I thought I might scrapbook, and I cut them into four and a quarter inch strips, and then now I'm scoring at four and a quarter, so I will end up with pages that are four and a quarter by four and a quarter square which should give a little small border around <clears throat> each four inch page that I got back in the swap. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm just uh, scoring them and then once they're scored I go back to my guillotine cutter and cut off the excess of each page. So they're kind of like a little folded card that is that ultimately would be eight and a half by four and a quarter piece of paper folded in half and I picked colors that I thought would coordinate with what I received from all the different artists. So I will link up in the corner the original video when I made my page which is the love one. All, all the pages were supposed to be inspired by an inspiring word so there's create, there's love, there's redemption, there's um, I can't remember all of them, but you'll see them on the pages. Inspire, I think. And everybody picked a word and then made a, made um, enough of the little 4x4 four four pieces to have one for everyone. And then we all sent them to Felicia Fallum. Um, she has a channel. And then she sorted them out and sent them back. And when I made the original video, I told you that I was going to make another video showing you what I was planning on doing with it. And it's just been a while. <laughs> it took a while to get them back because of the uh, the one package being lost. And then also, of course, November was crazy. I couldn't do it then. So, so basically, it's just been a while. But I will link... Um, up in the iCard, the original video, and then below in the description box I will also put everyone else's videos so that you can see how they made each one of these little pages that I'm going to use. So for the covers of my book I had a, a piece of packaging, it was from the Crocodile um, hole punch thing that I bought. I keep packaging if it's a nice thick um, you know piece of paper that I think I might be able to use for something and in this case this piece of uh, backing that came on with the crocodile is perfect for me to cut two four and a half by four and a half inch squares out of it and then I'm going to cover them using some jelly prints. Uh, I know that this one came from uh, Peg Robinson when we did our um, gel with shell paint with Peg series a while back she sent me a whole bunch of jelly prints and this is one of them um, it's got a Seth Apter uh, stencil used with a jelly plate on it that says unfinished and I thought that that was appropriate because really this book is unfinished since I don't have the eighth page <laughs> so I thought it would be a good cover to use that um, jelly print and in addition it is the navy blue color that I used on uh, a couple of the pages so it matched perfectly and I thought that was a good choice so I'm just gluing the first page of my little accordion fold um, series of pages that I glued together and I, I glued them um, so you have a card and then you glue the next one the two pages together so then you end up with three and then you glue the next one you end up with four I know you watched me do it but I might not have explained it 
and um, if anyone has any questions you can leave them in the comments below so this piece by Callie Black um, it wasn't quite 4 by 4 it was too big to fit onto my little pages it was actually more like four and a half by four and a half and it was made it's made on recycled cardboard which is a great idea but it was just too big so sorry Callie I trimmed your art <laughs> because I wanted to put it in the book with the rest of them so I went ahead and trimmed it down to four by four which kind of ruined the edges because she had painted all the edges black so that you didn't really see the um, the corrugated portion of the cardboard because she's like she'd like put a lot of either glue or um, paint in there to to fix that but I cut those edges off so it looks fine because I um, mounted it on a piece of cardstock but from the side you can see that it's it's corrugated paper so then I glued in all the little pages and um, I did them all on one side and the very last one I shouldn't have glued Shimmy Dixon's on there because that needs to be glued to the back so I had to take it off and put it on the other side <coughs> which I will finish it <coughs> excuse me again jeez I will be finishing it with all the little pieces of papers and things that people sent in the package so this jelly print I can't remember where I got it but it's from somebody else <clears throat> and I've loved it so long and thought it was so great that I've never used it I've had it for a long time and I just thought it was so beautiful I didn't want to use it but I decided to use it and it's on a piece of cardstock and so it it needs a little bit of heavier glue and a little bit of scoring for me to cover the back portion of the book but I did it the same way um, gluing it down on the front and then folding it over into the back and then I glue <clears throat> I will be gluing that back onto the back page but first I'm gonna add this string which came in the package um, Peg Robinson's she put hers inside of a folded envelope and then she added um, some she had scanned some of her art and made them into little stickers there's a couple little stickers she stuck it down with and uh, then she tied it with this twine so the twine was in the package so I went ahead and used it for my book tie to keep the book closed because since it's kind of like an accordion it's also kind of like a spring <laughs> and it spr will spring open if you don't tie it shut so I punched a couple holes through the backing threaded the twine through and then now I'm gluing down this back page to the back cover so then those two little pieces of twine stick out and I can wrap them around the front and tie them in a bow to keep the book shut so now I'm gonna finish I'm gonna add this little sticker from Peg's uh, scanned art onto the front just to give it a little something extra and then I have a lot of unfinished pages in the book because of the way I did it so I decided to back the sticker with a piece of the navy cardstock which matches the cover perfectly but it's nice that it's self-adhesive and I don't have to glue it down to the cardstock <laughs> just peel the back enough it's an actual sticker scanned art made a sticker it's pretty cool so there's the front pages and then chemise is on the back side which is so if you if you use if you flip the book like a book you can actually flip through each page um, or you can just pull it out like this and look at it and then you know put it back together <clears throat> flip it to the other side look at the other pages so on these back areas I wanted to fill them in with <clears throat> what was in the package there was some pieces of what I assume is scrapbooking paper that that has little sayings on it that somebody sent and then there's a other couple pieces of printed scrapbooking paper then there's this tea bag that's been opened and dried rinsed and dried which is kind of cool I, I save tea bags too but I haven't done anything with them yet um, mine are a little bit tricky because they're triangular shaped <laughs> so it's hard to make them lie flat at first 
so I decide to use the tea bag paper in this one that says memories are forever first on the first page because I think it coordinates pretty well with the purple color and I decide to get out some distress ink and use the vintage photo around the paper just to make it look more dynamic I'm not doing anything crazy this is really kind of like what you would do with scrapbooking or card making I'm not going to do any mixed media I'm not going to you know get out any paints or inks or anything I just want to finish up this book um, in an, a, a pleasing way mostly just using what was sent in the package um, I do use a few little things from my stash but like that piece of um, dictionary paper was laying on my desk so I just used it tucked it in there put one of the paper flowers that came in the package and then a little jewel um, to finish that page then I decide to use um, this green olive green piece I think it might have been torn from an envelope it looks like it's torn from an envelope so maybe somebody's envelope was that color and Felicia just um, gave us all a scrap of the paper it's a, it's a pretty color it's like a, a bright olive or green gold type green and then that copyright symbol matched it so I decided to use those two pieces I backed the copyright um, symbol with a piece of the blue that's in the back background and then added some of this dictionary paper on the edge for an added layer and then just um, put those on the page and then there's um yeah I decided to use the vintage photo again around the edges to make it more dimensional something easy and fun you can do anytime it's just to sponge the edge of a layer with some ink and it, it makes it look a lot better and then I have some uh, sticky gold enamel squares tiles something like that that was in a package that I received recently and uh, they're self-adhesive so I stuck three of those on there and then I'm just using this gold cord to make a little bow looking thing um, I love this gold cord I used to have gold silver and copper in there from Stampin Up I used them so much I don't have the copper anymore I wished I did and I think I don't have silver anymore but I still have the gold so that just added a little bit of a dimensional element and I do end up having to stick that down with a mini glue dot eventually because it wouldn't stay with the tacky glue <laughs> It kept coming back up so then there's a couple pieces of scrapbooking paper that somebody put in here uh, that have teal colors on them really pretty they kind of look like uh, weathered wood I would like to have that scrapbooking paper pack not that I scrapbook or anything <laughs> but I sure do like that paper so I added this one with the little leaves on it and then there was a, a random circle of scrapbook paper so I put that on there again using the vintage photo around the edges I'm not sure who included all these bits and bobs in the package who, who they're from but if they're if they're from different people they sure did a good job of uh, coordinating everything <laughs> not sure how that happened but I decided to use this little brad from my stash in the center of the flower these are still the same flowers that came with the package and it has a clock on it so I thought it kind of represented time you know these are all supposed to be representing some some sort of a word <laughs> then I just decided to add a little piece of ribbon and those two edges of the tea bag paper that tore off really easily when I was tearing it they're like the seams of it and I use those nothing ever goes to waste on my desk <laughs> I'm constantly using up little bits and bobs and sc scraps of things now oh, that's where I'm using the mini glue dots to stick down that to cord bow thing 
Okay, two more little pages to go, and I've got two more things. <laughs> so I decided to use the teal paper again, and I decided that the dreams come true one worked better with it on this purple background. And I'm backing it with the purple cardstock scraps left over. Then I'm looking for some purple ink or plum, dark plum, eggplant, whatever color that is. And I end up using the Stampin' Up! one because I didn't have it in the distress thing. My Stampin' Up! pads are really, really dry. But maybe someday I'll see if I can find reinkers for them. I have, have reinkers for some, but I don't use them very often because they're water based and they I don't use them in mixed media. And I really haven't been doing scrapbooking and card making all that much, so I probably really don't need them anymore. But it sure was handy to find one that matched the, the backing paper there. <laughs> because really, neither of these pieces are purple, but I um, sponged the edges with purple and then I added a little bit of purple into that turquoise one and it works fine. Works just fine. Then a little butterfly clip and a piece of purple ribbon, and there you have it. Dreams come true. So if you guys are enjoying this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment so I know you were here. Um, subscribe if you haven't already so that you don't miss any videos. And of course, share if you'd like to. Pinterest or Facebook or Twitter or something. So this last page, um, that's an ATC, an artist trading card, that Peg sent in her package, and I'm going to use it as a layer. It made a great layer. <laughs> I think that's another of the, uh, piece of the Seth Apter stencil that she was using from Stencil Girl Products. And then I'm just going to use the Enjoy the Ride, <clears throat> backed it with another scrap of that blue. Then... Um, adding one of the flowers on the wheel and another little clear gem from my sticky gems and then I added three more up at the top just to balance it and that pretty much completes my little accordion flip book and all I have left is the envelope and one flower <laughs> so um, thanks for watching and the close-ups are coming. That's it for me. Thanks. Bye-bye.